So here's a couple completed mittens. You have some options if you want to fold this or not. The pattern will show you where to cut it if you want it past your wrist a little bit or right up to your wrist. There's a few different ways you can sew it too if you want to just do a loop stitch on everything you can or a combination of both. This one has, you go all the way down and all the way back so it has that cross stitch across the whole top seams. You also, it'll show in the video how I do trim this to kind of round that off. This one needs to be cleaned up just a little bit. But it rounds it off and just makes it look a little more refined. Or you can leave it raw and it looks just fine like that too. I kind of prefer this one over that one for the mittens anyways. My trapper caps, I usually round the edges on the raw edges, but a few different ways to do it. Before you get started, you'll need to know what size pattern to print off. You can print them all off and put the tape over them, and as you use them, you can save them, though they're reusable. However, I find this the easiest if you don't have one of these or some other options. Go around the widest part of your hand. I'm about eight and three fourths. If you don't have something like that, you can just grab a string or something and go around your hand and measure that. And then just hold it up to a ruler. Print off your pattern, figure out what size you are, print off the appropriate pages, and you're going to need some sheepskin. I get all my sheepskin from Weaver Leather. This is the chrome tan sheepskin, has a nice color, nice and flexible. The process is going to be a little bit different for these things here. Usually we cut outside the line, tape it to our leather, And you'll see here. Now at this point it gets different. I'm going to put tape across the whole front and the whole back and we're going to cut out right on the line. And we're actually going to punch all the holes in the paper first before we lay it down on the wool. Go over the entire front and the entire back you don't have to go over the whole back. I do because it makes it a little more rigid. And then you can use these patterns over and over again. And now we're going to cut out right on the line. Now we're going to punch out all the stitching holes but just through the paper. And I'll go with a 332nd. You can go a little bit smaller, but if you go too small, it's going to be hard to trace all those stitching marks through this pattern onto your sheepskin. You're going to have a lot of little pieces sitting around, so sometimes I'll do this step on a separate part of my workbench so that I don't get a ton of these little sticky things everywhere in my sheepskin and whatnot. Once you get all the holes punched out, you have a couple options. You're going to want to take a feel, take a look, make sure you're not going through a really thin spot. Avoid some of these where it might be real thin or torn or even a hole. Make sure your patterns face up. You can just print one side and then flip it, but I have in the patterns where you just print both, that way you know, and you can keep, make sure to keep the parts separate because they are a little bit different. But you can put a little weight on here, just hold it down. What I like to do is cut out little sections and then I'll do some tape. The only problem with the tape is it can be real sticky. So you're going to want to press it up against some fabric or your hand. Make it less sticky, otherwise it's going to pull up and maybe leave some residue even. You're also going to need some of these heat erasable marking pens. The only thing bad about these, yeah, they erase just with a hair dryer. But if you're going in below freezing temperatures, sometimes these can reappear. However, they are washable as well, 
So if you have any issues with that, you, these can just be washed out. And I did some tests and they work pretty good for that. You don't want to press too hard. One of the only bad things about these is the ink flows a lot faster. They'll run out of ink pretty quick, but this does come with some extra inserts to put into the pens. Make sure you keep the pen straight up and down. If you go too far at an angle, the lines and the stitching holes will be off. And you may need to grab a piece of paper just to get the ink flowing, or if it happens to stop. You can see there's tick marks on here. You can mark them right now, or you can wait while you're sewing and just count every so many. That way as you're sewing it, you know everything will be lined up. And you can see that tape was just sticky enough to hold it on there without leaving anything permanent. So now we're going to cut this out. You can use a utility knife and just cut just through the skin. But I find I like scissors better, a nice pair of scissors. You're going to want to make sure this bottom blade stays up against the skin. If you just haphazardly go through and cut, you're going to cut through a lot of the wool and make it look all weird. Especially on this bottom edge, because this edge is going to show quite a bit. Shorter snips seem to work better. It's almost impossible to keep fuzzies from getting around, but if you go through and just grab the loose stuff, that'll help quite a bit. Keep in mind, with this pattern, the edges are going to show. So Try to keep the cuts as straight as you can. Now you have a couple options. This edge here, if you want it rounded off, make it a little more clean looking. You can do that so that when it's folded up, that edge will be a little more rounded. The other thing is, if this is a really dense wool, you can trim back a little bit. I wouldn't trim back to the stitches, just maybe like halfway. If you have any trouble sewing it, that can be helpful. But since I'm not gonna do that to this, I'll show you on this piece. And you can use a small pair of scissors or the large one like this one and just clip back a little bit and that's going to give you just a little bit easier time sewing those two edges together. But when I have to do that, I usually like to use one of these. And I'll just go in like one or two teeth. That's a lot quicker. It gets closer to the skin as well. But that's only if you need assistance stitching because if it's really dense, or really long, you might want to do that. For these, I'm not going to. And the other option to round these edges off, and I think for this pair I will do that. You can come across with this, but you risk nicking that leather, the skin part. So I usually just use scissors, come straight across. And you're always better off not cutting it enough because you can cut more, but if you go too deep and try to go too quick, you could mess it up. A small pair of scissors can be real helpful with this step. And the last thing to do to the part is punch these holes. Now I used to try to get the wool out of the way as much as possible, butt this up against here and try to get it out of the way or even just go like that. But after doing a lot of different stuff, I realized that's not really necessary. This is a 0.8 millimeter hole punch, something real small. A stitching chisel will work, but that's more of a cut. And I find that the thread can pull that cut a little bit larger. A hole punch is just a little bit better. It doesn't seem to rip this leather as much. But like I was just saying, hold this flat, get right on that mark, 
and just go right through the, the wool side while you're punching these holes. And I found it's pretty insignificant how much of that wool is gonna come off of here. And that speeds the process up quite a bit. You're not trying to keep all the wool out of the way and spend a lot of time doing that. I probably wouldn't go any bigger than a one millimeter hole punch. Like I said, let me take a look. I think this is a 0.8. Yeah. I have the three pieces here. And when trimming back, if it's super dense, you can trim back a little bit where the stitches are gonna go, but I'll never trim back or on the outside of a mitten because then I feel like the tips of your fingers kind of will get to that seam a little bit easier. Sometimes I'll trim back a little bit right here but for a thumb, I may trim back around this bottom edge a little bit. However, the way this is made, if this is dense or thick especially, I will thin this out a little bit. Otherwise, the thumb can get too tight in there or I would have had to make the pattern bigger and that thumb would have been real big because a lot of wool would be in there. So this one is kind of that happy medium where there's still plenty of wool in there, but it doesn't get too massive. So to have that fit right, I'll either come in with some scissors and trim this a little bit, and I'll leave more at the tip of the thumb. I won't thin that out a little bit, which is the other side right here, and maybe even right here. But just across the center is where I'll thin it out the most, and you can come in with something like this. You have to be careful not to go too deep. And don't trim around the outside. You want that seam to have a good amount of fluff so your thumb doesn't go right to it. You can have something like this on there, but before you even start, you're gonna to have to make sure this is combed enough so that'll kind of slide through there a little better. I usually just go by eye. And you can sew this together first and then push the thumb back through and do it a little bit at a time to try to get a better fit. But scissors work real great too. You're always better off not doing it enough and taking a little more off later if you think you need to. You can sew this thumb together before you even sew it onto the mitt and put your thumb in there and see how it fits. So since this is pretty dense, I did take just a little bit off around this top edge here. And if you take a little bit off of this bottom edge, it's going to assist in sewing that on. Just don't go back too far, just a little bit, maybe halfway to the stitches. Definitely stay away from where the stitches are going to be. Scissors also work. If you feel like your wool is super dense or you have any trouble sewing it, you can do the same thing along this edge a little bit. Um, I wouldn't recommend going up past here. You want to leave as much as you can around the top of the mitten. Like I said, when your hand's in there, if your fingers get to that end and you start to feel that seam, it's not as comfortable. But, uh, I will trim around this inside edge a little bit just to make it easier to sew, not much at all. And you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to, especially if the wool's thin. I wouldn't suggest doing this at all. Let me just get the wool out of the way. 
And I'll just clip this whole length of the side here. And since it's a mirror image, I don't have any marks along this edge. So if you've seen my other video, like on the trapper caps, you'll know that I come through this first hole like this. And when you're starting the knot, loop through twice. It makes it tighter and it holds better so it doesn't loosen up on you while you're trying to do the second part of the knot here. Get it tight and finish that knot off. I'll put a dab of glue on these knots just to make sure they don't come undone. But what we'll do is two things. We'll go through this side hole again because then that's going to pull the knot up against the hole. And that'll allow us, right when we start doing our loop, it'll look real nice. It won't be coming from the top of this knot or anything. And the other thing I like to do is grab this other end and pull that through as well. We'll pull that to the inside. And you can trim that later on, but I like it to the inside and put a little glue on that knot. Just makes it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Be careful, don't go too much or it'll soak into that leather. Just the tiniest little dab is good. And I'll sometimes just make sure it's worked into that knot just a little bit. And then continue on, just coming across and going through this side all the way down. And for mittens, usually I'll go all the way down and then back so you get like the cross stitch over each hole. But you can just go down one way. There's a lot of different ways you can actually do this. I'll try to hold that tight so it doesn't loosen up. You don't have to wrench on it, but you do want it good and snug, and you can throw a clip across there to make sure it doesn't go back too far. You can sew a pair of mittens in a day. This, this goes pretty quick. You just work your way all the way down to the other end. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a double so it crosses over each side. It holds it a little bit better. It's not necessary, especially if you're in a rush. Going down just once is plenty. It's a good idea to just take a look as you're sewing and don't just pull the stitch tight, but make sure it's flowing across the top of this nicely. Now that we got to that point, we'll just come back across and start going down the other way. And again, if you watch each stitch, just to make sure it crosses over nicely, it looks pretty good. As I finish that seam, since I'm coming through and going this way, I'll tie a knot on this side so that it won't pull back through that hole and loosen any of this. Grab, if you want to, you could grab that one and have, have pulled it through this hole so you could have just tie those together. I have a whole lot of thread left. I should have gone a bit longer. So if you're going all the way down and back, this was four times the length. I would probably do five times the length just to make sure you have plenty of thread. I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. And I'll go through and do that one more time, a little dab of glue, and that way that knot isn't going to pull back through. And you can test after the glue dries. Test this, that's pretty good. And you can flip this inside out and trim just a little bit more if you need it just a little bit thinner. Next step will be to put the thumb in the palm side of the mitten. 
And you can see I'll stretch this out just a little bit. If you start pulling or going like this, you're gonna rip it somewhere. A lot of times right here, but it all depends on where you're cutting this from the hide, but just gently stretch it a little bit. It'll be helpful, make it a little bit easier to get this in here. And I've sewn it on, just keeping the thumb like that and just going through and lining it up. Um, it can be helpful to flip this inside out. Just be gentle and roll it out slowly. This will also give you the opportunity, if you want, to trim this down a little bit more. Just stay away from that seam. You don't want to thin that down at all. And I actually do want this just a little bit thinner. These two holes on that seam side, the one hole on each side of that seam, will be these two holes right there. And then this very opposite side. That mark is this mark here. So if you don't have your marks on there yet, it can be helpful to keep your pattern just to make sure you get that one mark there for that seam side. But then you can just count out however many so you know you can line this up correctly. So whether you throw this inside out or not, it will be that seam that was sewn will go right on that line. This can start to be a little bit hard to get lined up. Once you get going, it does get easier. And then those marks, line those up because there is a little bit of easing into the pattern so one side might seem like it's a little looser than the other, but that's intentional for the three-dimensional pattern to line up correctly and fit right. And you can grab a needle or something, push some of this wool down. While I'm getting it situated, I'll always throw extra clips on there. I'd rather have too many than not enough while I'm getting everything lined up here. You can do this without flipping that thumb inside out, but for me it's just a little bit easier because now that whole seam is kind of right where I need it to be to sew through it. If I left it the other way, it's a little bit harder to kind of get in there and get through. You can see here we got to pull it just a little bit to get those two marks to line up. And that's probably good for now. I'll pull one clip off where that seam is so I can get to it. Just make sure this first, here I'll pull that one off too so we can see a little better. That first hole, see what I mean? It's a little hard to get in there at first. Once you get going, it gets easier. Even pull some more clips off just to get in there and get this started. Right on that side of that seam, go through that first hole, and then that will be on the side of that line. Same as before, go through twice and tie a knot. to kind of adjust it. And retighten. And I'm going to come around and then go all the way back to do that cross stitch and then I'll tie it 
to the other end here. But since I'm going to be going through this way, I'm going to pull that knot over to that hole so it gets pulled up tight. And this really is the hardest part of this mitten is just getting this started here. You could even start this knot and then start throwing clips on. Whatever works best for you. There we go. Okay. Now we're just going to keep going around. So this second hole is just that other hole on the other side of the seam. And that falls on the other side of that line, the next hole. Now it can be good to get a couple more clips situated. I'll throw one a little closer on this side. And make sure everything's out of the way now. Because as we go, it'll get easier and easier. And some of this wool can be trimmed later on too if it doesn't get pushed back through. Same as before, hold that thread and make sure it kind of lines up straight across and looks nice. Good time to put a couple clips on where you sewn and get this situated another mark out. Just go to the next mark and clip where the mark is, not each clip along the way. And once you get that, if you want to put more clips in the middle, then you can, as long as, and you can even see the holes lining up. If you need to twist it a little bit, you can. And besides the thread catching on those clips, it's getting significantly easier now. Just take your time and make sure stuff's lined up and it's not too bad at all. If you're only going around that one time, at this point you can tie a knot. I still probably like to go over that seam to this side to tie the knot. But since this is where we started right here, I'll hit that and then just reverse and go back around that way. Same thing as before, make sure it kind of lines up and crosses over that seam nicely. Going back is way easier. So I don't usually use clips at this point because if I try to go tighter than what it already is, it's gonna look a little off. So I just snug them up good like I did before and then whatever they loosen up, it usually matches those stitches just perfect anyhow. So it's just a matter of going back across. When I look, if I can't really tell which hole to go through, I just take a look. Whichever hole has two threads in it, then it's that next one you're going through. So I'm finishing up here. That is that last hole right there. So instead of just coming around, I'll just go straight over so I can come right out that other hole next to it. Then I'll just tie a knot right to this other side. And same as before, that go through twice and all that, a little dab of glue, and I can push that thumb back through. Take your time, don't just force that out, but 
There you go. This wool will compress a little and it'll form as you use it. We'll start by putting a clip one mark down. It's a little bit easier than fighting the end right off the bat. And you can get that end one on. And I'll just clip this the entire distance before I start sewing. And since I didn't trim any of the wool off the edge, it'll be a little bit harder to make sure that wool's out of the way, but it's worth it because then you're not feeling any of that edge inside the mitten. It'll just be a little bit more comfortable. And this will be the same as before. Start it, get that knot tied, and then pull it around. And I have a really long thread here because I just want to be able to go down and all the way back. But if you don't like dealing with that much, you can have enough so you just go down, tie a knot, and do a separate thread if you're doing the crossover stitch. Back through again so it won't pull that knot against that hole as we're sewing. Can tie a knot and be done at this side. You can just turn around and go back, but I'll go just straight across one stitch just to hold these edges a little bit better. And then I'll continue down. To finish this knot, you could come through, tie it in between. Since this one's going to be folded, I'll just come through that next hole and tie a good knot on that side here. And there's that one. This one has that wool kind of shaped. This is the point where I'd kind of clean this roundness off a little bit. Just be careful not to clip any of the stitches or anything. You can just leave it like this one here and just has a little more fuzzy on top. I kind of prefer this look for the mittens, but for those trapper caps I make, I like to do a rounded. Makes it look a little cleaner with the raw edges. But different ways you can do it. This thumb I did with the cross and then just finish that off with just that single loop. Same around here, whereas this one. It's got that double on every seam. You can use a hair dryer to get rid of all those little marks, but I find that holding it still on one spot can get a little hot. I just throw these in the dryer, medium to low heat. Depends on your dryer, how hot it gets. You could always start at low and go from there. But if you have any issues, they can be dry cleaned. They can be washed, but if you wash them, you have to be careful what detergent and stuff. And the pattern, the first page, will mention a lot of stuff on there. And it's a good idea to just look it up. But washing them will change the look of the leather side a little bit. And it can kind of bunch this stuff up, which will happen anyways over time. So that's not really that big of a deal. But And the pattern will also have it cut off in a couple spots. So if you want it to go down your wrist a little bit or just right past your wrist, it'll say on the pattern where to cut these. And I think for this thumb, I'll bring it out and thin that just a little bit right there. This one feels pretty good.